Today I got this email from a person named Diana Manal who's looking for some help. She's trying to create an artist ear theme for Blogger, Blogspot blog, and she can't get the background and header images to load up into uh, that new site or theme. So I want to walk through just how to do that. I've done that before, but I was looking at my own website. And when I looked at my own website, I realized I had an article with a bunch of broken images. I had a migration a while back and a few images fell off the map and the answers would have been in those images, but they're not there anymore. So I figured let's make a video and make this easy. So here I am in Artistier. I have opted for the blogger option and I'm going to create a quick theme. Now I've actually set up a blogspot blog over at how to design blogger or blogspot templates. And I, this is this theme here is not something I've designed. This is a default blogger theme. However, I do kind of like the background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and emulate some of this blogger theme, but customize it a little bit for the person that maybe likes this but wants to make it a little bit more their own. So come over here and start now. This is not a picture of me, obviously. Uh, actually, here's a picture of me. Uh, running one morning before Blog World a couple of months ago in Las Vegas, but as you can tell, in the morning when I'm running, I'm not terribly photogenic. So I'm going to leave that off. And I'm actually using some of the artist ear functionality here. I'm going to leave a headshot off altogether because nobody really cares what a person looks like for this type of, of site. They just want to be able to create something. And there are a number of different library options that we could possibly use here. However, for our emulation site, there really isn't much of a header. What we have is basically a background, and we're going to go into backgrounds here and see if we can actually pull one of those up. And I've downloaded that background image from Blogger. I'll leave the lighting normal. Now you notice on the Blogger site, the content area is transparent, so we need to make our content area transparent also. So a couple quick things first, just to make sure that we're orientated. I'm going to make this 80% uh, width type of theme. And let's put the menu at the top of this website. Now the color scheme is all wrong. I'm going to see if I can find see if I can find a default color that's pretty close to what we're looking for. Darkness isn't bad. We'll come back in here to sheet and we need to set a transparency to give it that glassy look. That's a little too light. That's even lighter. We need to go in the opposite direction or you notice when we have no transparency, what we have here is a gray background. Maybe what we need is a background that's black. Then when we make our transparency, it will be a closer fit. See, that's a little grayish. Let's darken that up a little bit. Or let's take it all the way to black. So, there's... so we'll truly understand what our transparency settings are doing for us. Now when we come in to pick our transparency level of 50% or 70%, being even more transparent, we really have a good idea of what we're opting for. Now here's also a good example of where the basic version of Artist Ear for $50 or the advanced version for 130 ish I can't remember if it's 129 or 139 comes into play. Down here you'll notice transparency options. I'm going to pick that and here I see a area called transparency. Now this doesn't stop at 40% or if I want 43% or 44% I can pick that as opposed to the standard default settings. What you see here in this pop-up this is something that comes in the more expensive version of Artist Ear, the ability to come in and type exactly what we want. What we want. So hit OK. I'm going to double check my width. Yep I thought I messed that up. I'm going to set this to a percentage. So as our screen changes, this will change, 
and we're going to change the layout of our sidebar with the sidebar on the right to mimic what we see in Blogger. And actually in the header, I'm going to get rid of the image altogether. I don't want that. And we could have this be the sheet width or the page width. I'm going to go with, this is what page width would do. I'm going to try that on this particular thing. That's not exactly what they have there. I'm going to do the same thing for the menu system. Again, we've got that. I want to go full black. And I want to skinny this up a little bit. It's a little too big. That's better. Now there are a couple different areas where we can determine how much space goes between each of these elements. One is the sheet, and with the sheet we can set a, what's called a margin these days. This used to be referred to as the offset in some versions of, older versions of Artisteer. We're working with the latest version, Artisteer 3. So we can move the, this section, the sheet area, up and down. Then there's the menu section. which places a margin above the menu. Not below the menu, between the menu and the sheet, but above it. And then the last is the header. And again, that's above it. So with each of these elements, it's placing a margin above that element. So for the sheet section, the margin goes above it. For the menu section, it goes above it, etc. I want to put our menu back Above. and remove that margin, tighten everything up, and give some transparency to our header, but not full transparency. I don't like those bubbles either, so I'm going to dump the bubbles. That is a glare. That looks better. Now I could put in headline text here, but that's actually something that's populated in Blogger. So for our purposes, if I want to see what this is going to look like over there. I'll copy it, paste it in here, and delete this one, just so that while I'm working in design, I know what I'm working with. I do like the white over on the other one, so I'm going to change that to white. And let's increase the size up a notch. We can move the position around if we choose to manually. So I can or there are a couple functions here as well. If I want to make sure that it's dead center, I can do that. So, at this point, the real question is how to kick it out so that it looks like this on our blogger site over here. Well, simple enough. What we want to do is publish to blogger.com. A couple ways to do that. There's a drop down over here, and you can see we can export the template or we can publish to blogger.com, either or. And we've got some export options as well. We might want to check. The export options, especially as we're concerned in this case about the question of image hosting. So, do we want to show the blogger nav bar, for example? The blogger nav bar is this little area up here. So, if we want to get rid of that, we can. Do we want a vertical menu? I've got that in here actually, and I'm going to get rid of that. Something I forgot to turn off. To get rid of the vertical menu, I just come over here and it'll remove that from our sidebar area.
come back to our export options. Show home item, that'd be the home page. That's our menu up here. I think we're mostly ready. Now I'm, there's a couple different providers that you can work with. One, if you have your own hosting provider, if you have your own host, you can upload this to an FTP server. If you're working on Blogspot and you've never worked with a host before, that's not terribly uncommon. So there's two other options that you can use. One is Picasa Web Albums, which is a free service from Google. Picasa is something that Google owns, and Google owns Blogger too. So if you put it in Picasa, you're basically putting it with Google on their web servers, or you can use ImageJack image hosting. Now, I have a Picasa account, so I'm going to go with free. Free is always cool, or at least it's free. And so we're all set to go. So I'm going to prepare to publish the template. Now, I need my username and my password. Okay, I've typed in my ridiculously strong password. And I'm going to hit remember password. You'll notice too, I can also see other blogs that I either have access to or that I own up here double check my options if I want to, but I'm going to publish away. This basically connects over to Blogger. It's creating an album in Picasa for the all the different images associated with this particular template. And that's not just the background and the header, but it's images for the buttons, the gradients that go with the buttons, a number of the icons that show up. For example, uh, down here, the little e email looking, uh, letter looking icon that shows up here by the edit button the bullets, making sure that each one of those elements for this template make it into that Picasa album so that when the website is rendered, it'll pull all that stuff from the Google server and everything will show up and just basically work. It says it's posted successfully. So if I come over here, back on our site, and I refresh, I should see something brand new. So let's see what we get. And voila! It's changed. Oh, there's my mug popping up over here on the right. I've got my new header, got a menu system if I want it, and I have this new blog. I've got that similar look and feel because I've got some transparency, which is good, um, but it's a little bit more my own. And you can also see, as I resize it, it starts to wrap. Now here's something that points out the good and the bad of a wrapping website you'll notice the text isn't wrapping down. And that's because at a certain level things don't wrap real well and I've got a long title. So that's a good point about all this. I expected that a little bit but it points out why you should always test your design afterwards. I now realize the error of my ways. Maybe it wasn't so smart to do a fluid width theme. So I'm going to come back over here to sheet width and instead of 80%, I'm going to take this up to 900 pixels and publish it back to Blogger again. Come back over here, look at my website again, refresh, loads in, and now when I resize, it's no longer a fluid width theme. The transparency still works, so you can see the background shifting a little bit as I resize it down, but the website stays at a fixed width which is good. And in Firefox, I've got too many. And here's how it looks in Firefox. I'm going to publish this video over here on the site and share it back to the Google Groups where Diana's questions have been asked and hopefully that will prove useful for Diana as well as other people looking to do this. And then I'm going to come back here and fix my own article at softdoit.com get these instructions back out there because this is really easy, but it's that critical step of setting up that image account with the cost of that you